Hi folks, welcome back. Today I've got a video on how to do some manual uh, business card imposition within Adobe InDesign. Basically we're going to be taking these two uh, PDF files that I have here and we're going to impose those directly in InDesign, setting those up, multiple up, ready for print. If I go into my properties uh, panel in uh, Adobe uh, Acrobat, you can see this is a 3.75 by 2.25 uh, business card. Business cards are 3.5 by 2 in the U.S., so this includes a 1 8 of an inch border, uh, or bleed, I, I should say, on all four sides, and that's the same for both this file and this file. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new file, and it has to be 12 by 18. We're going to start with one page and we're just going to leave our margins uh, to default and then our bleed and slug need to be set to zero. So I'm going to create and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the name of my layer and I'm going to call this uh, placed uh, card designs. And Now I'm going to pop into my uh, pages panel and I'm going to start on my um, parent size sheet and basically the reason why is because we're going to create crop marks and we want those to appear on all pages of the uh, InDesign file. So I'm going to create a rectangle that's three and a half by two inches which is our finished size and I'm going to go up to step and repeat and I'm going to create a eight row by three column grid so if this is unchecked please check that and that'll create a, a grid for you and I want this at 2.125 by 3.75, which will basically include a, a quarter inch slug in between the uh, horizontal or the uh, uh, in between each column, and then a one eighth of an inch in between each row. And that basically maximizes the sheet size of a 12 by 18. You can do the same thing here if you're doing a eight and a half by 11. You're obviously just are not going to be getting. Uh, 24 up on a sheet you're only going to be getting say um, 8 up on a sheet so I'm going to hit OK and then I'm going to select all and I'm going to group and I'm going to come into my alignment panel and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to center everything and you can notice here there's a little bit of a gap between the top and the bottom so I'm going to change that in my margins and I'm just going to increase these by 1 16th of an inch so that everything sits nice and flush hit OK and then I'm going to ungroup these. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the actual crop marks. I'm going to highlight all and I'm going to go into the scripts panel. In InDesign there's a built-in crop mark uh, script that you can use which is very handy. So if you go into application, samples, JavaScript and then it's this one right here crop marks.jsx. If I double click on that uh, in the crop mark section, which is what I want, so this has to be highlighted, I'm going to change the length to 0.25 inches. Make sure to put in uh, 0.25 in to change it to inches because by default it's set to points. And I want to offset this 0.125 inches. So essentially what I'm going to do is I want the crop mark to be a quarter inch long and I want it to be placed a one eighth inch away from the design. And I don't want it set to zero because I, that way when you go to cut, if the front to back registration of the paper is off just by a little bit, then you'll essentially have a crop mark that, that kind of shows into the design of the card. So um, I, we always back those off at least an eighth of an inch. You can do it even further if you have more room, but in this case, since we're going to be pretty close to the edge anyway, I'm just going to leave that to uh, 0.125. I do not want registration marks and I want to do this to each individual object. So I'm going to hit OK and after a second, you, if I go back into my layers palette and I uh, lock my place card design and I um, make it invisible, you can see it's created a new layer called my crop marks and it's basically put in everything here. If I hit my W key for a preview, you can see here I have all the crop marks. But what it's done is it's created a crop mark for each individual uh, uh, box. I don't want the inner boxes. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag out here. 
and make sure I highlight all the inner boxes but leave the outer boxes unchecked or unhighlighted and then just hit backspace or delete and then all those will be gone so I go back in here and I'm gonna uh, uh, lock the crop mark layer and I'm gonna make my uh, card design layer visible again hit my W key once again and you can see I have all of my basically all my template here for uh, 24 different versions so I'm actually gonna, going to delete these and the last step I'm going to do here is I'm going to create guides and I'm going to match up everything so that I have eight rows by three columns 0.125 gutter here uh, here between each row and 0.25 gutter between each column and I want to make sure to do this by uh, margin not page if you do it by page you can see it doesn't line up with the crop marks so I want to make sure that it's on margin and I'm gonna hit OK so now I'm gonna go back to page one and I'm gonna place in my designs for my folder so I'm gonna go up to uh, a file place and I'm gonna check both or highlight both of these and I want to make sure that my show import options is selected I'm gonna hit open and the reason why I have it selected is I need to uh, place both the front and back. So I need to have pages as all. And I also want to make sure that it's set to media and not to trim. If I set it to trim, you can see it does not include the bleed. So I want to make sure it's media. And so I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to do that all for the other design as well. And I'm going to hit OK. And I'm just going to place these. Oops. I hit my W key. I'm going to place these in here. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to create a second um, uh, page. So this is going to be the back side. And as you can see, when I created the um, second page, since my crop marks were set up on the parent size or parent page, they, uh, the crop marks show up here as well. So I'm going to take my front and my back, oops, highlight both, and I'm going to cut those, and I'm going to paste them onto page two. I'll leave that there for the moment. And what I want to do here is switch this up from a height of 2.25, and from the center reference position, I want to make this 2.125 for both. Basically, that takes off the extra top and bottom bleed that we don't have space for because the um, gutters are only one eighth of an inch. So one thing to remember is when you're uh, placing a, a card design, if I just put this up here, right? Let's just say I just throw these on here, right? So if I go here and then if I were to copy this and place it, uh, or let's say uh, I have Two designs right this one is for 500 this one's for 250 so if I just copy it and place it next to it on the back side I can't put it in the same position I can't put here and here and then this one over here because this page is going to flip in this direction so this design here has to be on the left side here so these two have to basically swap over so um, let me just delete that because I'm going to step and repeat it. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to line up. So we should be in the center position here. I'm going to take this because I'm too close here. Um, I'll just manually move it. So should be at 2.25 by 1.5625 for the center reference point. So that puts me basically right in the center of this row and this column. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. And I'm a little off. So I'm going to go 1.5625, 9.75. This puts me in the center. And now I'm going to use the step and repeat function to place this design I go one row by two columns and that'll if it was by one by one put it to two so it puts it in two columns for me I hit OK and then I'm going to highlight all of them and I'm going to do step and repeat again and I want eight rows this time with only one column 
and just make sure that your your uh, vertical and horizontal positions were the same as what we worked on before and this will put everything uh, 24 up basically on a sheet this one's a 500 uh, total quantity so I have double of the 250 and so when I do the back side hit my W key again to get back to the preview and I'm going to make those 2.125 2.125 and basically you're going to do the same thing here Fine there. I'm going to step and repeat this. I hit the hot key, run one row by two columns, and then highlight everything. And I'm going to make this eight row by one column and hit OK. And so now I have my front and my back all set up. Uh, one thing you want to do too when you save this, uh, you want to hit save as. And uh, I'm going to go here to my business card and position folder where I'm working and I want to save this as a InDesign template file and the reason for that I'm just going to call this uh, 24 up 12 by 18 uh, business card in position and hit save and the reason why we're saving as a template and not a document is because next time when I open this up I don't want to accidentally click on something and overwrite it um, that way uh, and actually I should have saved it from the beginning so that uh, or before I placed everything in there and that way when you open up that file you basically have a template that you can just drop the um, PDFs into and you don't have to create this every single time so essentially I have everything set up I'm just gonna go uh, here and go export and I'm just going to call it the same uh, same name and I hit save. I want to make sure that even though it's using bleed settings, there are no uh, bleed and I don't want to put any crop marks or anything because that'll add an extra crop mark to the outside, which is unnecessary. So I'm going to hit export and after a second, if I go up to uh, two page view, you can see here is my front and there is my back. So now everything's set 24 up. This is going to print out, and when I finish, I'll have 500 of this card, and I'll have 250 of this card. If you do imposition like this within InDesign, it also gives you a little bit more flexibility. Let's say if you have a, a larger uh, run size as far as like you know multiple names, and you want to put them all on one sheet instead of let's say making one copy 24 up, you can just do. Uh, this one name, you know, six up or eight up, whatever the case is, that way you can divide it out a little bit easier so you don't end up with multiple layouts. That way when you go to cut it on your uh, guillotine, you're only working off of one stack of paper instead of like six or seven stacks, whatever the case may be. So it makes things go a little bit faster in the binary department. Again, you can do this same thing within a program like Fiery and Pose, but if you don't have it, this is a way to do it manually within InDesign. Um, you can also do the same thing in Illustrator. I just find using InDesign is a lot faster. Um, the tools make it quicker to, to uh, place different PDF files in and create the crop, crop marks um, using the scripts. And, um, so that's why I, I, I use it. That's my preference. Anyway, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. I'm happy to answer anything. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. And Hopefully I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, folks.